What's up top 10 fam, hope you're having an awesome day, I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Now I will never go scuba diving, I will never go on a cruise and I'd rather die in a land plane crash than a water one with more chance of survival. This is how scared I am of sharks, even though yes I know they don't attack unless provoked, they think we're seals, blah blah blah, save me the bullshit. And guys, I've done my research, it's fine. It's just a phobia that's embedded within me, we're just gonna have to leave it at that. And it's not like I'm a bad swimmer, I'm actually a good swimmer, I just refuse to interact with the deep sea, or a pool at night, or during the day. Honestly, unless I'm supervised, I will not go in a pool. So with my irrational fear in mind, here are the top 10 scary pictures taken in the deep sea. And just before we get into it, there are quite a few creatures on this list and I personally think they're fairly ugly and scary, but that's only my opinion. I know they obviously have no control over how they look. I just find them creepy. I'm not saying anything ugly is scary. I just wanted to preface that. Either way, starting us off with number 10 is the death sign. I feel like the title of this one shouldn't be enough to warrant it as scary, but expand on it, we must. Eagle's Nest Sinkhole qualifies as one of Florida's most treacherous underwater caves, if not the most dangerous. It's a deadly diving location and it's famous for its mermaid shows, which really just means it has a bunch of lightless pockets and nooks and crannies that house a lot of rare translucent marine life. Right before the entrance of this sinkhole, there's a massive death sign. I kid you not, it says stop, prevent your death go no further. It has the Grim Reaper on the left of it because obviously we have to add insult to injury when you're down there and under the title it has four facts mostly about you dying. For example more than 300 divers including instructors have died in caves like this one. Without cave training and cave equipment divers can die here, it can happen to you. And my personal favourite cherry on top is there's nothing in this cave worth dying for. And I mean they're not wrong. Some of the tunnels under there plunge 300 feet deep, so much so that people have described it as a Venus flytrap. You get in and quickly get distracted by everything around you and you don't even realise how deep it gets and how quickly it does so. 0 to 100 real quick. It's even been dubbed the Mount Everest of cave dives. Say no more dude, say no more. You're not going to find me anywhere near that. No no. <laughs> no no no. Ok coming in at number 9 is the sinkhole. Now I've seen so many pictures of people literally diving into an endless black hole in the ocean and I don't know how they do it. It's a black hole that for all you know could be hiding the last megalodon in there just waiting to pounce and eat you. I don't even get how people just free dive in there, like what if you don't have enough oxygen and energy to get all the way back to the surface, you're dead maves. It's just too dark. It's too deep, it's too filled with unknowns, and frankly, it's just freaking dangerous. I think something Friedrich Nietzsche said really applies to this one. He said, if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. And I fully believe that. This picture, like I know something is staring back at this girl ready to eat her alive. Like, need I remind you guys, less than 5% of the ocean has been explored. The other 95% is ready right under her to eat her up. At number 8 we have the devil serpent and yes that is definitely not this creature's name but when you look at it that's really all that comes to mind. This snake dinosaur looking thing is in fact a moray eel but even the website I saw this picture on titled it the malevolent moray eel, like that's not a compliment mate at all. These deep water eels are found in the south pacific ocean and honestly they look like a dinosaur snake eel hybrid mutation. These little sh are carnivorous, they eat basically anything smaller than them and their main predators are barracudas and sea snakes so it's safe to say moray eels are apex predators in their own ecosystems. They have short serrated teeth whereas others have fang-esque teeth. Imagine they were found in shallower waters and you went diving and this eel just burst out of some coral tunnel on your left or mouth open creeping at you. I honestly can't, like I think that'd be the first time I'd ever defecate underwater and the last time because this thing would kill me. Filling our number 7 slot is Christ. Yes, they actually found Jesus Christ down there in the deep sea. Surprise, surprise. No, no, obviously they didn't. This picture was taken off the coast of Key Largo, Florida, and it's one of three bronze statues of Christ that are submerged. The first one was submerged off the coast of Italy back in 1954. There's another near Granada, and finally, this one that was erected in 1965. The statues were put there for many reasons. Firstly, to represent Christ in the new world, secondly, as a memorial for those who had died at sea, and thirdly, for those who continue to explore the depths. 
but how haunting is this photo? Like, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way at all before you guys come at me like, Antichrist. It is a haunting image. Like, this giant Christ covered in water damage and plants just looking upwards. I mean, it's called the Christ of the Abyss, for God's sake. Like, it's just, it's haunting. It's, it's it gives me the feeling like he drowned even though I know he was put there. But just the thought of scuba diving deeper and deeper into dark water and seeing this drowned figure with his arms outstretched in the middle of open water just makes my skin crawl a little bit. It could be just me though, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Now at number six is the fish from hell. I mean its actual name is the black dragonfish, but I reckon my moniker fits it a lot better. This picture literally looks like this fish demon of death emerged from the parts of the ocean that are so deep they're actually in hell. Apparently. The the black dragonfish has light emitting organs all along its belly to trick predators since the light changes its silhouette. It even has bioluminescent lights next to each eye that either attracts mates or helps find prey. Believe me, they're not finding any mates looking like that, I can assure you. Now the thing has a few rows of razor sharp teeth, not to mention the thing has teeth on its bloody tongue. Like. Why was there a need for that? There really wasn't. Like God was just like, you know what, this creature already looks like the spawn of Satan. What else can I add for, you know, just like a touch of panache? A toothed tongue? A teethed tongue. I rest my case. Let's keep fish well deep under the sea, shall we? Coming in at number five is the chair. Honestly, this image is haunting like all the other ones on this list. I feel like deep in the sea you expect to find horrifically ugly animals or the remains of old shipwrecks. Rarely do you expect to find a random inanimate object like a kid's chair. The chair in the photo is tiny, it's yellow, and it's scaring me. I'm wondering if I even want to know how it got there or what happened to make it get there. Was a young child thrown off the side of a yacht? or cruise on their little chair? Did a family yacht ride go awry and sink and the chair is one of the only surviving items from the tragedy? It's just giving me major ghost ship vibes and I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it. No. At number four is Zemcha Canyon. Bro, I know we had deep canyons underwater, but this is like the daddy of canyons. Located in the middle of the Bering Sea, the Sumbarine Canyon is the deepest canyon in the world and is also tied for the widest one as well. At a vertical relief of 8,530 feet, it's deeper than the Grand Canyon by more than 2,400 feet. Like, if you just look at this thing from an aerial view of the Earth, it's like blue sea, land, and then just a massive cliff drop into a dark blue vortex. It's nearly 9,000 feet deep and we've only explored 2,000 feet of it. Lol, we're a joke. Stats like that just make me feel like humans are just so puny and fragile and just so breakable and useless. Just a picture of this little submarine going into the canyon. Like no light goes down there, it's just this eerie white torch of the vehicle illuminating parts of the ocean that have just never been touched. What is down there? Will we ever know? I definitely hope so, but I'm a bit scared to see what we find. Is my ex down there? Let me know. <laughs> Filling our number three slot is the Goblin Shark, or we can call it by its Latin name, the ugliest shark I've ever seen. This thing looks like a living corpse. I've never seen the need for something so horrific to exist until now. The living fossil is 125 million years old and is found in the deep sea. I mean, of course it is, otherwise it wouldn't be on this list. I think the unsettling part of it is the fact that Goblin Shark's skin is semi-transparent, so the pinkish hue on them is really just a direct look at their insides, which I don't want want or need. Secondly, they have these elongated snouts and needle-like teeth, but the worst of the worst are definitely their jaws. They're highly extendable so it can just be swimming around and just detach its jaw and eat something a few feet in front of it, and then its jaw goes back to its original place like nothing even happened. Even when they're not coming outwards, they still look barely attached to the body of the shark, which is just its not a nice sight. They're found in depths that basically have no light, and I don't really think this creature needs to see the light, so I feel like we can just happily coexist and never see one another. It's a deal. Now at number two is the Titanic. I feel like it was expected that this was going to be on the list, but honestly I feel like I'd be doing a disservice if I host any ocean video and I don't include the Titanic. This event doesn't need any introduction, and if you don't know what happened with the Titanic, then I don't think you even deserve to know. So there's that. But now I'm about to tell you. In 1912, the Titanic hit an iceberg on its maiden voyage and sank, killing at least 1,500 people. The ship split into two and sank 12,415 feet below the surface, and the 
wreckage was only found in 1985. Water pressure at that depth is freaking lethal and on top of that the site is just ghostly. I feel like because we had so much information about the Titanic before it sunk that seeing the pictures of the wreckage just make you imagine in detail what would have been going on on the deck, who would have been living where, where the last song the band played was, just everything. The pictures just ooze its final moments and honestly I feel like it's haunted. I know I'll never know but so many people died in this one event and drowned in and around the same area, I would honestly not be surprised for a second if their spirits and souls were trapped in the deepest parts of the ocean with the wreckage itself. That could honestly be a great idea for a gothic horror novel now that I think about it. I want to copyright that if possible, live, right now. <laughs> Finally, at number one is the Pacific Viper Fish. You know when you're playing a fighting game and you get to the last level and you have to fight the final boss? That's what the Pacific Viper Fish is. We've reached our final boss, people. This fish is in the abyss, abyss of the deep sea, and during the day it can be anywhere between 200 to 5,000 meters below the ocean surface. And at night it comes up a bit more for food, but for the most part they're down pretty deep. Looks-wise, they're only about one foot long, and they are ugly mofos. Ones I wouldn't want to encounter during the day, during the night, during my lifetime, thank you. They have huge mouths and fang like teeth and are this iridescent dark blue silver colour usually but can be light black as well. Their teeth are transparent which is just weird first of all and just creepy but they also don't fit in the fish's mouth because of how big they are. So they just curl back on the outside which obviously makes it look even more scary and monstrous. And you just, you just don't want to see it, you don't want to see it. And that's it for today video guys, I should have probably prefaced this video with the fact that if you have thalassophobia then you should probably skip it. Thalassophobia is an intense fear of the sea or sea travel and just like large bodies of water and just the vast emptiness of it all. But it's too late for that trigger warning clearly and according to the buzzfeed quiz I took I too have thalassophobia so that's great. Thank you for coming to my TED talk, I'm your host Eamon Hassan and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!